Welcome to Learn Commerce PU Online Classes. Don't forget to like our video and subscribe our YouTube channel for all the updates. Yes, now let us um, know the second part. First part, uh, first part I have already explained that is uh, maintenance of capital accounts of partners under two methods fixed capital system and uh, fluctuating capital system. Now, we we'll move on to the second part that is uh, distribution of profits among the partners. In my previous classes, I already told you that is a uh, Profit and loss, both are there in the business. There may be either profit or loss. So, how will you distribute that profit or loss in the partners is a part of discussion here. Distribution of profit, if there is a profit in the business, that should be distributed among the partners in their agreed proportion. Suppose, there are three partners A, B and C and profit sharing ratio is A is to 2 is to 1, 2 is to 1, then the profit if occurs to the business, if there is a profit in the business, it should be distributed among them in this agreed proportion, that is agreed ratio. If there is a loss in the business, then in the same way, we have to distribute the losses also or the partner should bear the losses in the agreed proportion, that is 3 is to 2 is to 1 in this case. Now, for distribution of profits and losses, in case of partnership firm, we have to prepare a separate account. A separate account is to prepare because in case of sole trading concern, any profit that occurs in the business or that is earned in the business, that will be added to the capital of the owner, the sole proprietor. Or if there is a loss, it will be deducted from the capital of the sole trader. But here, we cannot do like that. What we have to do is, we have to do all the adjusting and embrace, adjusting and embrace, then we have to distribute the profits. So suppose, we have to pay interest on capital to a partner. Uh, we have to uh, pay salary to one of the partners or some partners. Or uh, commission is to be payable. Or uh, any other remuneration to be payable. Or uh, interest on drawings be recoverable from the partner that should be entered in a separate account that is called appropriation of profit. Appropriation of profit for which we will prepare a separate account called profit and loss appropriation account. Profit and loss appropriation account. It is an account. Profit and loss appropriation account is an account which is prepared, prepared to distribute the profits among the partners after making the adjustments. Adjustments in the sense that amount will be payable to the partners or receivable from the partners will be adjusted here and after that the final balance in the profit and loss appropriation account is transferred to the capital accounts of the partners, capital accounts of the partners. So here what we will do is we will prepare profit and loss appropriation account with the balance brought down that is net profit that is earned in the business because we will appropriate the profits or losses among the partners. So this account is an extension of is an extension of the profit and loss account. This is this is an extension of profit and loss account because we will we will start the account with the balance of profit earned in the business or losses that is incurred or suffered in the business. So profit and loss account is a loss appropriation account is an extension of profit and loss account of a firm. So it is like a ledger account. It is like a ledger account where we will start with the 
with the balance of profit or loss. If there is if there is a loss in the business, that should be entered on the debit side. On the debit side. The entry is when we prepare profit and loss account in D form. Profit and loss account in D form. You have studied this in first PUC. So profit always you will, you will get on the, on the debit side. That is, uh, here we will enter all the expenses. Here we will record all the incomes. And ultimately, we will find out the difference. If the income side is greater, I mean, if the credit side is greater or the total of credit side is greater than the debit side, it is a case of profit. It is a case of profit. Here you will get, you will get the profit. So we will pass the entry like to profit and loss, profit and loss, appropriation account. So the difference amount between the total of credit side and the total of debit side is the profit because the credit side total income is more than the expenses. So here the profit should be transferred to profit and loss appropriation account. Entry will be profit and loss account later to profit and loss appropriation account. If it is reverse, that is, debit side total is greater than the credit side total. In other words, the total of expenses is more than the total of income. In this case, expenses are more than the income. That is a case of loss. That is a case of loss. So it will appear on the credit side. That is by profit and loss account. By profit and loss account. Entry will be profit and loss account letter to profit and loss appropriation account. So let me assume there is a profit. Let me assume here yeah, there is a profit. That is profit and loss account letter to profit and loss appropriation account. If you record this entry in profit and loss appropriation account, we will record on the credit side by profit and loss account. Profit and loss account, you have right here in the market net profit brought down. Net profit brought down. Profit brought down. Most of the students, they do mistake here, they will write by balance brought down this amount. Because profit and loss appropriation account, balance will not be carried forward. Carried forward. It will be transferred ultimately to the capital of partners and it is closed. So, there will not be balance from year to year in profit and loss appropriation account. And I am on this one here. So, it will not start with by balance brought down. It should be by profit and loss account, the profit of the current year. That is the first entry. So, imagine, suppose it is uh, 50,000. Oh, remember, friends, profit and loss appropriation account is the account of the firm. It is the account of the firm and not the partners. So, here we will record the income receivable by the firm and payable by the firm. So any amount to be payable to the partners, I mean any amount payable to the partners is an expense to the firm should be recorded on the debit side. All the expenses should be entered on the debit side of profit and loss appropriation account because, because those are expenses for the firm. And any income, that is any amount receivable from the partners is an income to the firm and should be recorded on the credit side of appropriation account. Credit side of profit and loss appropriation account. Only one item you will get mostly at your level, at PU level, you will get only one item that is by interest on drawings account. Interest on drawings account. Here you have to write under that that is, I have to put a column here, then write the name of the partners, like to whom the interest is payable. Suppose there are two partners, A and B, write A, B, write the amount, how much, write the calculations. You have to make the calculations here, and all be drawn into the percentage, percentage of interest on points given in the problem. Remember, 
Here we have to make sure that you should get the amount of drawings in the problem and percentage of interest to be charged on the on the partner's price. Because it is an income to the firm, it is the interest paid on by the partners on the amount withdrawn from the firm by the partners. The partners took money from the partnership firm for their personal expenses and on that the partners are supposed to pay the interest to the firm. So it is an income to the firm, so it should be recorded on the credit side. Remember, if interest on drawings, percentage is given, drawings amount is given, and also interest on drawings amount is also given, then don't get confused in the examination. I will give you an illustration here. Yeah? Suppose the interest on drawings chargeable is 10 percent per annum, then amount of drawings may be 10,000. Amount withdrawn by is of age 10,000. Interest of price to be chargeable is 10 percent. And in the problem, again they gave you interest on price is interest on price is 600 rupees. See now the student gets confused. Whether to write 600 interest on price given the problem or to write 1,000 rupees 10,000 into 10 percent it comes to 1,000. So the students will calculate, student will get 1000 and the problem is interest on drawings is given as 600 rupees, amount is given. Then the student gets confused which amount to be recorded. Now, make it very clear when interest on drawings amount is given in the problem, like here, 600 rupees interest on drawings is given, forget about the percentage and amount of drawings. Don't see those things. Try to record this amount 600 rupees as interest on drawings. Your work is work will become very simple. If interest on drawings amount is not given, then calculate it at the given rate on the amount drawn and write the amount here. In this case, A has withdrawn suppose 10,000, B has withdrawn 20,000, and on B's in, there is a drawings, interest is to be calculated 10%, same rate, and the amount of interest on drawings given in the problem is 1300. Then what I will do is I will record 600 rupees against A, interest on drawings, amount given in the problem, and 1300, 1300 against B because it is already given in the problem. If I calculate on the amount drawn by the partners, 10% on 10,000, 1,000 A, and 10% on 20,000, 2,000 on B, it will become 3,000. But as the interest on drawings is given, don't get confused. Straight away, write the same amount in the, in the uh, appropriation account. Now, it will come to 1,900. Record this on the credit side. Record this. So, only two items will appear on the credit side. Then, all other items that will be given in the problem will be expenses. Remember. What are the items that may be given? So, that may be, and this is two, interest on capital, interest on capital account, and other items also, A, B. A, B. Remember, A and B interest on capital is given. So, you have to calculate interest on the capital given in the problem at the given rate of interest. And interest on capital is the amount payable by the firm to the firm. So, it is an expense to the firm. Remember, it is expense for the firm. So, we have to record it on the debit side. On the debit side. As I already told you, only one item will appear as an income to the firm and this is the account that belongs to the firm and not to the partners of the member very clearly. Take yourself at the firm and you are preparing your account as profit and asset appropriation account and keep the partners outside and no analyzing. Keeping that in, the, in your mind and analyzing. 
Now you have to pay interest on the capital contributed by Mr. A and Mr. B. Is an expense to the firm. So write here the interest on capital. Here yeah, calculate at the given rate in the problem. I will take it as ten thousand contributed by A. And interest on earnings. That is interest on capital. Percentage is ten percent. So it will be how much? One thousand, right? One thousand. And B interest on capital capital contributed is twenty thousand and rate of interest is ten percent. So it will be it will become two thousand. So total interest on capital will be three thousand. I will record here. And remember one critical point here: interest on capital should be provided only if there is profit to the firm. If there is loss in the business, then no interest on capital should be provided. So, if the profit and loss account, the, the loss incurred by the firm during the year is ten thousand, and then in that case, the first entry will appear on the debit side fence. Two profit and loss account, net losses brought down, net losses brought down. And in that case, interest on capital should not be provided. So, interest on capital will be provided only out of profit and not out of loss. If there is a loss, no interest on capital should be provided. Then, next item may come as salary, salary account. Under that, maybe to one part, no salary will be given to Mr. K. If for both the partners A and B salaries given, no problem. To record both the uh, the salaries of A and B salaries, it will be recorded. I will take it as only to A salary, maybe five thousand. Here, so make sure they will give you five thousand per month sometimes. So in that case, you have to write five thousand per month means into twelve every month. Mr. A will get five thousand as salary. So for the whole year, into twelve, that means sixty thousand will be. I will take here five thousand per annum. Five thousand per annum. That is yearly salary is five thousand payable to Mr. A. So I write here as five thousand only. Five thousand. Then there may be some other items like maybe commission payable to the partner, commission account only to B. Let us assume commission payable is a uh, six thousand per annum. So this is what we have to do. Then some other items also may be recorded like. Interest on loan or advance provided by provided by the partner to the firm. When the partner gives loan to the firm, it is the responsibility of the firm to pay interest on that amount. So when the firm pays interest on that advance paid by the partner, it is an expense again. So it should be recorded on the debit side of the accumulation account. So we will record all these expenses on the debit side, and we will balance it. We will close this. We will see which side is greater. In this case, if you roughly calculate, the credit side is greater. So try to calculate credit side first. Fifty-one thousand nine hundred. Fifty-one thousand nine hundred. Write the same total on the other side. Fifty-one thousand nine hundred. Find out the difference. It will be fourteen thousand this side. So find out the difference and transfer it to the capital accounts of capital accounts of the partners. Your nine hundred. So it will be, I think, uh, thirty-seven thousand nine hundred. Thirty-seven thousand nine hundred. Yes. So. This should be distributed. Suppose A and B are equal partners. That is, assume A and B are equal partners. So this thirty-seven thousand nine hundred should be distributed among A and B in their in their equity proportion. That is, equal one is to one or one by two and one by two. So two A's capital account, A's capital account, 
तो बीस के आंकड़े लिखा हम बीस के आंकड़े लिखा हम विधि बनाके प्रॉफिट ऑन एप्रोप्रिएशन प्रॉफिट ऑन एप्रोप्रिएशन बात से फिगर बात से फिगर दैट इस व्हाट वी हैव टू फिल्स सो दिस शुड बी डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड थर्टी सेवेंटी थाउजेंड नाइन हंड्रेड इनटू वन बाय टू एंड वन बाय टू बोथ विल गेट इक्वल शेयर दिस इस हाउ यू शुड प्रिपेयर प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस एप्रोप्रिएशन अकाउंट ऑफ इट फॉर सो दिस विल हेल्प यू टू हेल्प यू टू Okay, because this is one of the practical oriented questions in the NAMO. Prepare a profit and loss appropriation account of a firm with five imaginary figures. In that case, prepare this. They will ask you to prepare with imaginary figures. So don't write in excess. You will get zero. No NAMO. In board exam. So write by profit and loss account. Net profit brought down. Write any amount. Make sure you will write more amount on this side. When you enter profit and loss on the credit side, better to write more amount, like fifty thousand one lakh, five hundred lakh, and provide smaller amount on the debit side. And try to keep the round figure and distribute the profit in equal proportion. So you know you need not to struggle to distribute among the partners. So write all those these entries on the debit side and prepare like this. You will get full five marks. So this is about profit and loss appropriation account. We will move on to the problem part in the next class. So uh, right now assignments, assignment for you. Right, first question, first question assignment. Note down. First one, uh, what is fixed capital system? What is fixed capital system? Second one, prepare prof. Uh, prepare of uh, current account. Current account accounts of two partners. Prepare current accounts of two partners. Two partners under fixed capital method. Fixed capital method with imaginary figures. With five imaginary figures. Five imaginary figures. Imaginary figures. So these are two questions for assignment. Submit on time. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you.